What's up, everybody? It is Daniel Tapia, and uh, I'm so excited about this training. It's super exciting. Uh, this training is the Bye Bye Bat Wings from Flab to Fab. Yes, it's the most effective, sensible way to tighten and tone your arms, even if you always had insecurity with flabby arms or lunch lady arms. Now, uh, my name is Daniel Tapia, and I'm going to be doing this training right here. Now, this is going to be one of those trainings that's going to probably um, – go against the grain a little bit in terms of uh, some of the things that I cover. They're not typically used or talked about to, uh, like in the uh, quote unquote normal world. So these are going to be kind of against the grain kind of thing. So bear with me, keep an open mind, have fun, ask questions, and this is going to be an amazing training. Okay. Now, um, you know, you're in the right place. If you've ever wondered, how do I get rid of, rid of my lunch lady arms, right? How can I finally wear a tank top and my arms look like I'm flexing even when I'm not flexing. What do I need to do to get rid of the fat underneath and get my arms to start showing muscle without flexing? How can I make my arm day more effective? What are the best exercises to get the tricep angle? How can I be wingless? I don't want to hurt my wrist doing push-ups. What's the safest way to tone up? How can I make my arms look more fit and get those the loose skin go away? I need to have more arm workouts. What are the safest ones and how can they have the best results? Now, I have zero upper body strength to do push-ups. How can I work up to that? So if you, you know, and you're in the right place, if you ever had these questions to yourself, okay? Now, uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to jump right into it. Now, there's a, typical, there's a couple of reasons why you, uh, why you get arm flat. Number one, you haven't lost enough weight, okay? And if you haven't lost enough weight, that's step number one. Try to lose the weight, okay? Now, part number two. Now, we're going to assume that you've lost enough weight to start seeing arms, uh, your arms start to tone up. Secondly, you're, you've lost too much weight and you've lost it too fast. Now, you got flabby skin. Now, don't worry. I'm going to cover this. I'm going to cover this specifically, okay? Uh, number three is hormonal changes, okay? Typically, um, when you have your time of the month, you retain a lot of water, and a lot of that has to come inside your arms, which, you know, it sucks, but it makes your arms look like a little bigger than what they really are. Um, and then number four, you're doing the wrong types of workouts, okay? Now, we're going to go through uh, specifically the workout program in this particular presentation. So I want to make sure that you are in the right place. Now, um, you're probably wondering also, well, why do some girls have nice arms and I don't? Well, the truth is, is that the odds are stacked against you because girls on, Inst uh, on like, because the girls like Instagram models and or real models uh, that know how to take pictures also know the power of lighting and angles. I'm going to show you what I mean in a second. Okay. They have filters and some have professional cameras to make them look uh, more than what they are. Number three is Photoshop, of course. Every if you have to guess. Um, if this girl has filters and is photoshopped, chances are she is filtered and photoshopped. Okay. And then number four, they have very low body fat percentage. Now, um, these are the typical reasons why, um, other girls have nice arms and you don't is because, um, you probably see them on Instagram, but when you see them in person, you're like, mm, why do your arms not look like, uh, you did on Instagram or on Facebook? Well, Typically, it's one of these three things. Number, uh, actually, four things. Okay, so uh, now let's just take a look at this real quick. Okay, now remember I said about lighting. Look at the difference between this and this. Do you see how the difference in lighting and angles makes her arms look more toned? But if she put her arm straight down, it probably look like this. Um, However, I got to say this girl's a little more muscle. You can tell that she has more muscle just by the veins right here. This girl is very skinny, um, very, very skinny. I would assume she's very, very lightweight. Um, yeah, and I understand some girls do want to get skinny, but this skinny as, and if you're here, you're probably wanting to look more like this, right? Um, if you're in the right place, this is kind of what the look that you're looking for in terms of your arms. You want to wear that tank top look and feel kind of like this, right? Um, now, like I said, if you can notice the subtle differences, uh, number one is t uh, lighting. Number two, it's probably filters. Number three, um, she has very low body fat percentage. And number four, she has very good muscle tone. And I'm going to teach you how to increase the muscle tone. And, uh, and, and so it's, it's easier for you to get this particular look. Okay. Now, 
Um, I want you to take a notice to this one as well. She is very, very ripped. Uh, chances are she's probably one of those bodybuilders. Um, and like the others, she does have lighting, perfect lighting, perfect filters, perfect uh, cameras, but she also has really, really low body fat percentage. You can see her obliques right there. Um, so like I said before, nutrition is number one. That's key, right? But even so, some girls that even have a good nutrition protocol still have this, this like don't have the muscles the way she does, right? She probably trains the right way, okay? Now, that's quite a bit, <laughs> I got to say. But um, I want you to take a notice to like what mo muscles you should focus on specifically because take this, take this into uh, like your brain real quick, okay? Your tricep muscle makes up two thirds of your arm, okay? So knowing that, what do you think that you should do? What do you think you should focus on? What kind of what kind of exercises should you focus on? Should you do be doing curls? Probably not. Okay. Why? Because like I said, your tricep makes up two thirds of your arm. And then lastly, uh, or secondly, um, your tricep is the reason why if you have muscle, or you don't is the reason why you have those lunch lady arms or the non toneness. Okay. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through some some uh, particular things that are going to help you understand and make this easy so that you never have to guess or wonder ever again. Is that cool? I want you to just kind of nod your head. Now, uh, here it is right here. Okay, so how many times should we do, say, particular workouts to see a result, right? I'm going to explain to you right now in a second. So I'm going through this right now in a formula called frequency, intensity, time, and type. I go through this every single time, okay? Fit. Okay, frequency. How many times should I do this to see a particular result? Rule of thumb for me, if you're using weights like, um, like I, I'm typo, like bench press, shoulder press with weight, etc., anything with weights, I typically use it every other day. Okay, now if you're doing body weights or bands, you can do them every day because guess what? Your biceps, your legs, your calves, everything you use, you use them every single day. Why not just tone them up? Okay. Now, um, you're probably still kind of a little questioning this. Um, this is this kind of easy to understand, but you want a program that's going to, you're going to follow step by step, right? So stay with me. And at the end, I'm going to give you a specific program to follow, to use, to actually tone up. Okay. Now, how many reps and sets should I do? When in doubt, rip it out or tut it out. That means time under tension, which means continue repetitions for a specific time. So I like to do repetitions for repetitions for uh, for time, right? So like I said, tut it out. What I mean by that is time under tension. So I, I usually recommend three sets of 15 to start, then go up in reps when bored, then go down in weight or vice versa. So like, let's say for example, you go uh, three sets of three sets of 15 to 20, right? And you're like, ah, crap. Uh, this is boring. Then you go up. I usually typically recommend going up reps, going to 25. As soon as you get to 25, I tell you add some weight or do something different so that you can bring it back down. It makes it a little bit more intense so that you have to do 15. You have to struggle to get to 15, right? So if you're doing um, push-ups and you can do 25 push-ups, well, now do push-ups off a of bench. Now do push-ups, um, you know, uh, incline stuff like that. That's where you increase. If you have to do 25 reps or more, that's typically how I'll do it. Right. Or up the weight. Right. But over the years of training people, I've realized that some people, um, that's not enough to quote unquote, feel it. Okay. Kind of like this one time I was training this couple, right? <laughs> he was a, a, he was a big bulky guy and she was a little heavier than she wanted to be. Right. So I had to go through these things and I had, to, uh, they, they, they had been talking about already. I had them go through this stuff, right? This type of frequency, intensity, time and type. But I could tell the guy was not interested and the girl was not having it either, right? So I asked him, hey, what's going on? He's like, I'm just not feeling it. And that was it. Like, He didn't want to keep going because he didn't feel it. Some of you right now listening, um, maybe you're watching, listening to replay, have felt that same way. You're like, ah, dang it. I'm doing bicep curls or I'm doing curls. I'm doing arms and I just don't feel it in my arms. Like I just don't feel it. So I had to think on my toes because I was like, what did it, what did I do? So I felt it, quote unquote, feel it. And then I was like, ah, 
a light bulb, a light bulb went off. When in doubt, rep it out. I had him do as many repetitions as he could until he started to feel, uh, feel it in the place that I wanted him to feel it. So when in doubt, if you're not feeling it, continue doing repetitions until you feel it in this set, uh, in the said um, particular place that you want it to be felt, okay? And just like that, the, the concept of when in doubt, rep it out, came to play. So if you ever feel like losing motivation with exercises, reps, I'm recommending you to come back and say, when in doubt, rep it out, okay? But for now, I want you to stick with me. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna give you the step-by-step -step system to tone up your arms the right way, and it's gonna be fun. I'm super excited. Now, like I said before, frequency, intensity, time, and type, right? Um, now the type of exercises, right? The top three ways to exercise to effectively tone up the arms and why I choose to do direct arm exercises last every single time. Have you noticed? If you've noticed by looking at these exercises right here, I put them in terms of uh, greatest to least, right? And what I mean by that is the greatest ones that I think are most effective, I put them at the top. The ones that I didn't deem as effective to tone up your arms, I know this is kind of backwards. I put them at the bottom. Okay, so the three ways that I always recommend to tone up your arms are pulling, pushing, and shoulder. Okay, because pulling, whenever you pull, you use your bicep and your back. So you're getting a twofer. You're getting your back muscles to work out and you're getting your bicep. When you're pushing, you're using your tricep, your shoulder, and your chest muscles. So why not use all three? Why not get two first or three, right? So um, I'm going to give you guys this presentation as well so you can go back and look at it. So you can always go back and look at these exercises and see kind of like how I, how I program it. But anyways, um, pulling exercises. My top ones are pull-ups, right? Obviously, pull-ups with a band. That's kind of like if you can't do a regular pull-up. Uh, number two and then number three is bent over rows. I love those. I'll show you guys a video right now in a... Uh, in a few minutes, I'll go back and kind of, uh, actually, you know what? I put links on them so that I will share this doc with you and you can click on these links and they'll send you to the video so you can see exactly how to do them. Um, standing cable rows or banded rows. And like I said, I will show you a video about the band rows or standing cable, uh, rows like straight, straight arm rows, curls, 21s. I know these things are kind of confusing, but like I said, I'm going to, these, the exercises are not as, important as these three pillars pulling pushing shoulders right that's the three pillars that doesn't matter which exercise you use if you use these three pillars you will tone up your arms specifically make that shoulder look at that nice round shoulder you will make that nice round shoulder and bicep and tricep look just like that okay if you follow these three things pull push shoulder okay Push-ups, and uh, in case you can't do push-ups or it hurts your wrist, I'm going to show you what to do instead. Uh, decline push-ups. Now, uh, what I mean by decline push-ups is when you are when your feet are on the floor and your your hands are on a bench. And the reason why I say do decline push-ups instead of incline push-ups is because when you do incline push-ups, you work the top of your of your chest, right? And if you're a woman, typically you don't want this part to be toned up. You want the bottom. Why? Because it pushes them up. <laughs> you didn't know that. So decline push-ups are awesome for you. Tricep extensions, tricep pushdowns. Now, some of you cannot do some of these things and uh, that's totally understandable. I'll show you some uh, other things that you can do instead. Shoulder exercises. Um, shoulder press is my top one go-to. Arnold press, you can do it standing as well. And like I said, you're going to have this presentation. So you can click on the thing and it'll show you the workout and the exercise and the video on how to do it. So it's not like the exercises, like I said, the exercises have nothing to do with, with, um, with how this program works. It's all about the principles about this pull, push, shoulder, pull, push, shoulder, or shoulder, push, pull. It doesn't matter the, the, uh, the way. And in fact, if you want to make it awesome and fun, Switch it up all the time. Do one first, then the other, then the other. And I'm going to show you right now what I mean by that. Okay, shoulder press, Arnold press, side raises, uh, rear delt raises or flies because you want to work the back as well. So typically you girls want to look like, typically girls are going to look at you from behind and they're going to be judging you from behind, right? If you're using like a tank top. So it's best to work the back and the triceps are in the back 
and they that's what makes this nice little angle see this right here and that's why i say work the triceps because it makes that nice little angle and that indention and then the shoulder exercises that i'm mentioning right here those are the best ones to kind of like shape that nice little circle thing and make that indention right there so it kind of makes her look like nice and toned you see that like her arms if you looked at her just like wearing normal clothes you'd be like wow she is super toned and uh I want you to have that same effect on people. I want people to come around you and say, whoa, man, why is she so toned? And uh, if you follow these three things, you're going to get exactly what I just mentioned to you. And you're going to feel that the, the confidence rise just like she has right here. Okay. Now, the reason why I say um, do more of the complex, kind of the compound thing, do more exercises, like do um, pull-ups instead of curls, First is the same principle I say, stack your sticks to tone your arms, okay? So if you've ever kind of looked at people and you're like, um, why can't you extend 170 pounds, but you can do a push-up? Does that make sense? Like you can't, if you've ever seen like a, a big chunky dude and gone into the gym and he does like 400 pounds and then you go make him do a push-up and he can do one push-up. I'm like, congrats. So you can do a push up. That's good. But um, that's why I say stack your sticks to tone your arms. Here's why, okay? So say you're 140, 170 pounds, right? And if you try to extend, like if you go to a tricep extension and you try to extend 170 pounds, are you going to be able to do it? Heck no. Then why can you do a push up if you're 170 pounds, right? Because the multiple, multiple muscle, muscle groups working together. That's the key. Think about this, okay? How many times can you break a stick in halves? That's why I say stack the sticks. Only a few because once you break them down to smaller parts, they stack together and they become a stronger force, right? Same thing happens with your muscles. Why would you split up your triceps from taking away your shoulders and your chest exercises, okay? Together they can do more and together they can tone more. So that's why I saw it whenever you think about it, stack your sticks to tone your arms. Okay. So now these are my indirect ways. Now, sometimes these things get a little boring. So these are my indirect ways, my favorite indirect ways to tone up the arms that actually burn fat as well. Because like I said, if you're not at a slow, at a low body fat percentage, your arms are not going to show uh, the way that you're, you're actually wanting them to show. So I need you to kind of put things together in perspective so that it can make sense and say, you want to burn fat. You want to do a twofer. You always want to do something in conjunction with the other. You don't want to do them just one by itself. You want to do in conjunction with other things. So if you want to tone up your arms, these are my favorite ones that are like indirect and you can always put your own two cents in there um, and kind of just play with it. Now, rowing is amazing because check it out. When you're rowing, you're literally pulling your arms back. So you're using your back muscles, you're using your biceps, you're using the back of your shoulders, you're using three different muscle groups and you're burning calories because you're rowing, right? And you're using your legs, you're using your whole body. So rowing is a great example of um, toning up your arms like so that you burn fat as well. Jump rope, like I said, remember I was talking about um, that nice arm like definition, this angle right here, this when you do jump ropes, this thing comes out real nice. I'm telling you, it comes out real nice and pretty when you can do it correctly. So jump ropes are really good if you can do them. If you can't, that's totally fine. Pushing a light sled, you know, you've seen those like Instagram things where you they push like some random little heavy thing. Heck, um, I have a little I have a little car that my son drives. I bought him a little car, those little remote control cars from Walmart, the big ones. Um, and I lit, I literally just push them in it kind of like, um, have you ever seen anyone, uh, like on Instagram pushing those, those big old cars or pulling those big old cars? Well, that's an indirect way to tone up your arms because you can push your, you can push the little car. I'm literally pushing the car. Um, but it's a little car, right? So this is an indirect way. You can push a little sled. If you don't have a sled, you can literally just like put something on like, uh, like put your, put something like flat and put some books on there and put it on top of a carpet and literally push it across your house, push it back and forth across your house. If you have, um, tile, see, 
when you have when you understand the principles it makes it so fun like you can now do stuff that's like oh man i can do this and like i said when in route and when in doubt rep it out and when in doubt cut it out right so what i mean by that is let's say you're pushing a light sled you're like how many times should i do this well when in doubt cut it out time under tension um now <laughs> um Farmer carries. Um, I want to show an example about that, but basically what it is, is kind of like um, when you think farmer carries, think of, I want you to think of like when you go to the grocery store and you come back with like 15 bags and you're like, I ain't making two trips. I'm making one freaking trip and I'm stacking all those bags in my arms. And you like kind of like tippy toe all the way over there. You have like six bags on each arm and you're like tippy toeing all the way to your, your door and put everything on the floor. That is what we consider a, um, kind of like a farmer carry. So now you can kind of think in your head, well, if I want to tone up my arms, I can do that as well. I can just, every time that I come home with groceries, instead of saying, oh, I'm tired, you can say, Oh, it's a perfect time to tone up my arms. Uh, I'm going to sneak this one in. I'm going to sneak in some extra reps. And you literally just grab the, the bags. And you're like, give it to me, pack it on. Your kids are going to thank you. Your husband's going to thank you, everyone around you. And then your friends are going to thank you for showing up to their party because they have someone that looks good with nice uh, toned arms. Okay. So you went everywhere. Okay. Uh, inchworms. Uh, so this is basically you uh, like, if you're reaching down to touch your toes, you straighten your legs, you touch your toes, and you literally just walk your hands outward, like if you're gonna go walk into a push-up, and then you walk your hands back to touch your toes, okay, without your feet moving. So um, I would like to give you an example, So, but I wanna go through this presentation and introduce you to what I wanna actually tell you about the program and how to do it effectively so you can see, literally feel and see what I'm talking about here. Okay, arm circles. I'm pretty sure you understand the concept of arm circles. You literally just put your arms out and circle them back and forth. That would help if you're someone that doesn't like to do jump ropes. Okay, and that would do. Um, assault bike riding. So um, if you're a CrossFitter, you know what an assault bike is. So using your arms to push and pull on that bike is amazing. Number two, it burns a lot of calories. Okay, uh, scissor crisscross exercise. What I mean by that is literally putting your arms out like if you're a mummy and then putting one on top of the other and going back and forth, just like that. Just like, like you're a windshield wiper horizontal instead of like up and down, like, well, I guess, not, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I messed that up royally. Anyways, um, yeah, crisscross exercise. And so I want to, now I want to introduce you to the 21 day Tony challenge. Now, here is a challenge. Now I've gone through all the things you kind of need to know about toning up your arms you need to lose the weight right once you lost the weight you need to do the effective exercises and i've introduced you to the concept of when in doubt uh tut it out or rep it out and then i also talk to you about uh using complex exercises or rather compound exercises rather than doing direct um bicep tricep exercises because why get one when you can have two why get two when you can have three right? Why would you do a bicep exercise when you would benefit more by doing a bent over row? You will get your lower, you will get your upper back toned up. You'll get the back of your, your shoulders toned up and you'll get your biceps and forearms toned up as well. Why would you not do that instead? Um, so I'm going to tell you right now, okay, for the next 21 days, um, I want you to do this with me, okay? And I want you to test. It's going to test your will, but it won't take much much time at all. It literally can be done from the comfort of your home and literally takes like maybe like 10 minutes, probably less, okay, if you do it right. So this is how it's going to work, okay? Wait, hold on. How many of you guys are excited about this? Take off your mute right now, and I want to literally hear you how excited you are about this. I want you to do this, this challenge. It's literally for 21 days. You're going to do three exercises the three exercises, three exercise principles that I talked about, pushing, pulling, and shoulder. I want you to do those three exercises, tone up your arms, and increase repetitions by two every day on the seventh day. You'll increase by four. So check this out. I'm going to show you how this works. And like I said, you're going to get to see all the recording, and you're going to get this, this uh, PDF so that you can click on the stuff or print it out if you need to, okay? Now, here's how it works. I know it looks kind of crazy. Day one, you're going to do 10 reps. You're going to do a push. 
a push exercise. What I mean by a push exercise, you go back up here and you just look up, what's a push exercise? Oh, I can do push-ups. Oh, if I can't do push-ups, I'll do decline push-ups. I can't do uh, decline push-ups, I'll do push-ups um, off the wall, okay? If I can't do that, I'll do tricep extensions. If I can't do that, I'll do tricep push-downs. If I can't do that, I'll do, um, I don't know. So you can, I would probably just pick one of those four. Um, but typically you can probably do a push-up either regular push-up, modified push-up, decline push-up, which is push-up off of a, of a, of a bench or off the bed, um, or a wall push-up. So there's multiple variations of it and you can do them all the way. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to do a push exercise, a pull exercise and a sh shoulder exercise. So choose one, then go with it. That's it. Okay. So it's like, you're going to do a push up. Let's say, for example, we're going to do one, right? We just want to stick with one. So you're going to do decline push ups because you want to lift that, the boobies. So you're going to do decline push ups every day. You're going to do 10 push ups, okay? And then let's say you don't have that pull up bar, right? But you do have, um, you do have like a five pound or 10 pound, um, I don't know, a dumbbell. Well, bent over rows are your best friend. Or you can do um, standing cable rolls with. A, bond, a band or you can do um if you have a towel you can literally just wrap it behind something that's sturdy and just pull yourself to the towel lean back and pull yourself to the towel that's literally all you can do you can do it like that like when there's a will there's a way and if um and i want to teach you that no matter what you do if you state principle sound it becomes so simple and easy and look so i want to challenge you Okay, to do this. So every day for 21 days, you're going to do something that's going to help you tone up your arms. And we are back. So here's how the 21 day arm toning program works. Day one, you're going to do 10, um, either push, pull, uh, rather one push exercise, one pull exercise and one shoulder exercise for 10 reps. Okay, so what that means is um, you're going to do, let's say, for example, you just choose one from our handy dandy um, exercises right here. And uh, if you're coming in after we might add in some extra exercises right here so that you can, uh, holy smokes. Uh, let me see. Nope. Okay. So if you're coming in after we're going to add in exercises so that you guys can have something to work with. Okay. Now you're going to choose an exercise, right? Let's say for example, you want to do a push exercise. So, um, if push-ups are hard for you, like you can do regular push-ups, modified push-ups, push-ups off of a bench, push-ups off of a wall. Um, you can do push-ups anywhere, honestly. Um, if, um, if you don't want to do that, you can do a tricep extension. That's still a push exercise because it's pushing like anytime you're pushing something, right? Um, so you're going to do a push exercise, choose one. Okay. So let's say, for example, we're choosing one for any of them. We're going to do push-ups, pull-ups, or rather, um, if you can't do pull-ups, you can do rows. And I'm going to show you right now what a row looks like. And or shoulder exercises. So let's just say um, we are going to choose um, front side race. Okay, we're going to say front and side race. Okay, uh, that's going to be our shoulder exercise. So day one, you're going to do... Um, 10 push-ups, 10 rows, or like, I'm going to show you right now what I mean. Let's make this even easier. Okay. Let's go back up here and we will do, mm, let's just say pull-ups. Okay. Let's just make this easy and understandable first and foremost. Okay. Now you don't have to do pull-ups. You can do a bent over row, but some of you don't know what a bent over row is yet. Okay. So just bear with me. I'm going to make this very easy to understand right after this. Okay. So you do a push up, 10 push ups, 10 pull ups, 10 front raises, and front and 10 um, side raises. And what I mean by that is literally putting your arms in front of your face, bringing them down, bringing them to the side of your, your, um, of your body. Kind of like if you're, you're in a circle and someone tells you like, Hey, have an arms linked and don't make sure you're not touching the person next to you. Okay. That's literally a side race and then touching someone in front of you. Right. So it's one, one, right. So you're going to do 10 push ups, Then you're going to go on to 10 pull-ups. Then you're going to go on to 10 shoulder raises. Okay. Day number two, you're going to do 12. Day number three, you're going to do 14. Day number four, you're going to do 16. Day number five, you're going to do 18. 
day number 20, I'm sorry, day number six, you're going to do 20. And then day number seven, you're going to add four to the total. So you're going to do 24. And you're going to follow the same process, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 40. See how I added four at the end? Just because I wanted to make it fun. Um, then 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, 52, and 56, okay? So you're going to end with 56 reps on each one. Now, if you do this correctly, it's going to burn every single time. Now, some of you probably are thinking, Daniel, what if I can't do 56 push-ups all together? I totally understand, and here's what you're going to do. Okay, the goal of this program is to, um, the goal is to make as make it with the shortest amount of sets and the least amount of rest. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, so let's say we're on day number uh, six and we have to do twenty push-ups. You can't do twenty push-ups. Do as many as you potentially can be. Okay, so um, if you can do only eight push-ups, do eight push-ups. Rest a couple seconds, jump back in. There's no set time for how much rest. You're literally going until you cannot go no more for 20 reps, okay? So you do push-ups. So you do um, eight push-ups. You rest maybe like 15 seconds. Then you go back and you do um, eight more reps. And then you're like, oh, man, I can't do it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do your last four reps. Then you're going to go on to pull-ups. Let's say you can only do two pull-ups, okay? You'll just go pull up number one. Ooh, I'll get down. Ah, I did two pull ups. Okay, I got 18 more. Pull up again. Okay, I did three this time. Now I got five. Okay, and you just do that number of sets. You just write down the number of sets, and it's literally that simple. You just try to make it in the shortest amount of sets, try to break it up the least amount of times, and with the shortest amount of rest in between those times. Okay, and this works because it's going to literally force your body to work those muscles. And then secondly, it's going to tire you out. Okay. Try doing 24 push-ups, um, 24 pull-ups and 24 shoulder raises back to back to back. Okay. I'm using all the principles that I just talked about earlier in all the stuff that I'm talking about here. Okay. And that's why this challenge is so challenging because you're literally pushing your body to work harder than it's used to working. And you're making it fun because you're always adding and you're always doing something different, right? You're always going to add some more and you're always going to push yourself. So you will, like, let's say you do push-ups here, right? D14 comes here at 40 push-ups. And you're like, oh man, I can only do 10 push-ups. Well, break it up into 10. So you'll do four sets of 10, right? Then you have to do it here. You're like, oh man, I can only do 10. So break it up into 10. Five sets of 10 plus six. That's it. That's literally how it works, okay? Um, now, what if I uh, hate an exercise or I can't do an exercise? Well, go to your handy dandy exercise routines and switch it out. And that's it. Isn't that easy? That's super easy, right? <laughs> I thought it was super easy. Now, here's my final thoughts on that. And seven things I ask myself before any workout. And I think you should do the same. With any exercise and workout routine, um, if you don't take care of your body, it won't take care of you. Okay, don't work out because you hate yourself. Please don't do that. Work out and eat healthy because you love yourself. That's the key, guys. That's what's amazing about this. I don't do this because I hate myself. I do it because I love myself. And I want to look at myself and say, wow, man, I'm proud of what I did. Okay? Now, if you're doing it because you hate yourself, you're always going to do it because you hate yourself. Okay? And it's never, it's never positive reinforcement to you. It's never going to be a goal. It's never going to be like an accomplishment. You're going to be like, ah, crap. Finally, I did it. You know, um, if there's certain exercises that don't feel good to you, then don't do them or modify them. Okay. Um, if you're looking for longevity, that's what I, I shoot for. Okay. Longevity is way more effective than the quick fix. Okay. If you don't try to eat healthier and lose weight, your body will never reflect the kind of body that you want. Okay. Finally, with every workout, I ask myself these seven questions to make fitness a lifestyle and not a task. Number one, how do I feel today? Number two, how can I make my workout fun today? Number three, what exercise, uh, what exercises require the least amount of work that will bring me the most bang for my buck? Okay, where am I working out today? Did I lift a lot of weight yesterday? Did I do a lot of repetitions of a certain movement yesterday? What can I add or subtract from this workout to make it fun, but also uh, harder without getting hurt? 
so those are like the seven questions that I ask myself every single time I do a workout. And I think you should do the same because um, the mind is kind of like a processing center, right? Whatever you ask, you're going to get, it's kind of like Google. Um, you're going to ask, well, how do I lose weight? You're going to get a million different ways to lose weight. Okay. But you get an answer. That's the point. Okay. How do I feel today? I feel great. I feel like crap. Okay. Now, secondly, okay. How do I make my workout fun today? Well, I feel like crap. How can I make my workout fun? Well, you know what? I work out um, inside because outside it's freaking hot. What exercises require the least amount of work? Um, you know what? Or rather, what exercises require the least amount of uh, work? So instead of doing uh, curls, well, the least amount of work for the most bang for my, my buck. Okay. So instead of doing curls, I can do bent over rows because they require less work because now I, I can work three muscle groups at the same time. Instead of working one muscle group individually, take up a lot of time and it gives me more bang for my buck. Why? Because I'm working three muscle groups instead of one. So I shorten my time by three times, right? You, you one third your workout time. Okay. Where am I working out today? I'm working out at home. That's fun. Um, did I do a lot of weight yesterday? Probably not. Uh, did I do a lot of repetitions of a certain movement? No, I ran yesterday. So here's what I do instead. Okay. Uh, what can I add or subtract to make this workout fun, but also harder at the same time without getting hurt. So bent over row, I can also do a lunge in between, right? Between, um, if I'm repping it out, what if I want to get to a hundred today? Do you want to get to a hundred? I'm going to rep it out and I'm going to take away something, right? So those are the basic seven extra, uh, questions I ask myself every single time. Now I'm going to um, open the floor for any questions specific to this particular program. Okay. So if you have questions, I will throw them 